Uh, here is what we're going to be looking at. This is your final image that uh, we're going to try to get back to. So, yeah, uh, it, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. It's just uh, a number of steps. And it was took me a while to get here from trial and error. And so what we are going to do is we are going to restart. So, all right. This is this is where I got uh, with my final image. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start again. I don't think I'm gonna close it. I think I'm just gonna close down uh, everything else that I did, and then start that way. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. I guess I should delete these and watch this. Uh, I've it's been years since I've used Clip. Uh, delete. Yes, 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 yes. Also, uh, the this uh, static image, uh, I know I did not draw this. This is uh, from a work in progress. Uh, I can't remember the dude's name. Uh, he is a fantastic, fantastic uh, artist. He's currently working on his own movie called Showtime, but the image you're looking at, that's the actual image. Uh, it was... Uh, production art for Cyberpunk 2077 and he did these years ago but there's 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 a number of them but yeah uh so I used it because you know VHS 80s Cyberpunk it all goes together so okay uh first step get your static image that's what you got all right so we're going to add some stuff we're going to start with a new layer and we're going to say we want to add a filter and our filter, we're going to go to draw and then add noise. And it's a little big when it starts off. Uh, I would suggest changing your percentage here. Uh, what did I do? I think I did, I think I did 10, but I'm going to do 15 this time. See if it's a little bigger. Yeah. Okay. That should work. Okay. So then, you are going to take your blur, and you're going to Gaussian it, or Gaussian it, depending on uh, where you're from. And let's say 20%. I bet that did 0%, didn't it? Yeah, good, 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 good. All right, now part number dose for this effect is you're going to go back to your blur you're going to go to motion blur and you want this to be not super strong you're mostly just looking for the uh, the effect of a blur because you want it to look like uh, a little bit of frame rate is going through it like you know like you would uh, 1.4 yeah, that's probably good. It's, I mean, you just want it to stretch out that fuzz is what you're looking for. And, I mean, you can already kind of see the staticky effect of it. Uh, we're going to go to Edit after that. And we're going to go to Tonal Corrections. Ugh, sorry. I'm at a really weird table here. And then uh, I usually use curves whenever I do my lightning and stuff because it, it gives you way more options than just your brightness and uh, contrast. But we will be using that in a minute. So what you want to do is you want to make this a little brighter but also keep that darkness in there. You don't, you don't want it to be too washed out. I can't remember. Is that? Oh, yeah, that makes it way too dark. Man, this tunnel car. I think I need to go up here. No, nope. down. No. Nope. <laughs> I can't remember how I did this. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's right. I had to go the opposite way. I forgot. You want it to be over here. And then keep this down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we're going this way. And if you're looking, I mean, you you can pretty much see what's going on. I'm going to add another point. Let's see if that helps. 
Yeah, there we go. There we go. Alright. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then... You're going to go back to Tonal Corrections, and now you're going to do your Brightness and Contrast. And... Your Contrast, you want... Not super, super high, but you want to go up. And see, you're starting to see a lot of it. I'm going to take this brightness up because you want a lot of white and a bunch of grays, but you don't want too much. Ah, that's probably... We're going to go there. We're going to go there. Okay, so... Sorry, I keep hitting this mic. It's a really old school mic, and it's like sits in front of my face. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it a few times. But okay, so now we're gonna change our blend mode because 90% of uh, the look for the VHS is going to be done through blend modes. Um, what did I, I think it was? Add nah. soft light. Now, God damn, I don't remember what I had it set to. Uh, f fuck word. Overlay? No. <laughs> screen. Was it screen? Wasn't screen. Color dot. Uh, that's, that's looking pretty close. I really should have written this down. No. What did I have this on? Wait, did I do saturation? No. Oh, go away. No. Alright, I think we're going to go back to overlay. Nope, uh, we're going to go back to scrying. And then we're going to do some more tonal corrections. See if that gets it down. Uh, so we're going to go back to tone curve. And we're going to darken this up a twinge. That's getting too dark. Cancel, 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 cancel. We're going to try toning this down a twinge here. There. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Because you're wanting, you're wanting some of that white to stand out. Actually, hold on. Yeah, yeah, we need to do that one. Okay, so we're going to go back to Tonal Correction. And we're going to go to Hue, Brightness, and Contrast. We're going to pop this contrast back up a twinge so it's got that white. Because you want that white out. That's your, uh, that's your lost frames or your uh, lost pixels, I guess. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And then I know you're thinking, like, that doesn't look right because... Why is it all over the whole thing? Well, that's because you got to do some stuff, fellas. You got to do some stuff. So what I did is I have my soft brush, and I got it set to 85. And the brush size is as high up as it can go. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, uh, my Procreate brushes are like 10 times this size. Uh, okay, so now what, what we're going to do, just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And then I'm going to turn this one off. So that way if we fuck this up, we're not going to have to worry about it. So anyways, what you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to erase pretty solidly your middle section. Because you want your tracking to be top and bottom. There's a few different ways you can actually go about making your tracking lines. Uh, you can do... Uh, Oh, you want to, You can do them like horizontally if you want to get like the interlace look. Uh, you know, you just you just play with stuff. 
90% of learning to do any of this stuff is just, you know, fucking around and figuring out. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now watch this. See if I can do this the same way I did it last time. Oh, shh, Nike words. Uh, I'm going to delete this layer now because it actually turned out pretty good. And delete. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this shit right here. And then change this one to multiply. And that should give you fantastic tracking effects. Uh, I'm actually going to tweak this out a bit in the center section. So that way it's just not so extremely uniform. That's looking pretty good. Actually, I'm going to back that up a step. Uh, command Z. Alright. Okay. I'm going to tweak that back down. That's looking pretty fantastic, actually. It's not as good as it was, but, you know. Okay. Oh! I completely forgot something. Um, fuck. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and merge this. I actually skipped a step from what I tried to do earlier. Uh, but it's okay. Merge with below. Nope, not working. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the internet. So I'm going to have to do a step over again. It's okay. All right. So what we are going to do here, since I forgot to do this like an idiot, we're going to go ahead and delete that one we just did. <laughs> delete layer. There we go. Okay. So uh, one of the motion things. Ah, sorry, I need some soda. Got a dry mouth. All right. Uh, one of the motion things that's going to go along with uh, this little action that we're doing, trying to make the uh, the tracking looks like you know it's moving across the screen, is we're gonna go to a transform, I think it was, yeah, and then we're gonna go to wave, and you're gonna see it's gonna wiggle the sides of the screen, and you want to get it pretty motiony. But as you can see, it adds these stupid little fucking things on the side. So what I had to do after that was actually just transform it. Which, I mean, you do what you do, right? So I'm going to, I think you can do this. Yeah, you shift, hold shift, and when you scroll, it's going to give you uh, overall instead of just one direction. All right. Now you can see right through here how it's kind of going at angles. And then up here, it's kind of got some of that same angle going on. That's what you want, because you want it to look as motiony as possible. I'm actually going to drag this down so I can get a little bit of even motion on both sides. Actually, watch this. I'm Oh, can I get a flatten this? Oh, I wish I used clip more often. Can I option... I bet you I can option this. Nope, not option. What about... Stop that. What about... Control? No, it's not control. I don't know how to uh, <laughs> free transform in uh, Clip. I've... Sorry. Okay, but I mean, this is going to work because it's giving us what we're, what we're looking for. So I'm just going to accept-elate that. And also, you're going to see, like, uh, some weird artifacts start to show up, and that's perfectly fine. You actually want that. Uh, okay, so now this one is good in the motion layer, and we are going to do another duplication. And we're going to get rid of that bad boy. And we are again... I wonder if I can shift to this. I can, thank you. All right, and actually, watch this. I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna clip out this to keep that tracking a little less uniform. There we go. 
that'll probably work. And then again, we're going to change. Okay, that's already still set to screen. So we're going to duplicate this some bitch. And we are going to change this some bitch to multiply. And that's going to give us our static. Now, like I said, this is really all trial and error. You can do this any number of ways. But as long as you get what it is exactly you're looking for, you're good. Uh, you can make the, the clouds uh, bigger, like whenever you do your uh, adding noise. It gives you the option to make your clouds bigger. Uh, that's good. I mean, just play around with it. You will eventually figure out exactly what it is you want to do. Oh, sorry. I'm, my, uh, my mini is super old. So she's not the fastest computer in the world. Uh, I would love to get me one of the new M1 uh, Mac Minis, but I need to save money. Okay, so there's our tracking. And if that is all you want is to learn how to do tracking, that's how you do it, right there. But I am going to continue on and show you the rest of the VHS stuff because I know Joey is going to want to see them. Uh, so just continue on if you'd like. Okay. So we're going to add a new layer. I'm actually going to get rid of... I'll leave that layer. I'll just put it back here, and we might use it later for something else. Um, what comes next? All right. Uh, I figured out how to do a... Uh, the pixels. So I will now do the pixels, if I can remember. Uh, they go to window, and then down here under material, it was under monochromatic pattern. Click that bad bitch. Uh, and, oh fudge, I have to find this manually down there. All right, so down in this list, there is a thing of lines. It's just straight black lines. And we will find it again. I actually, it was funny, I was looking for black lines and I just kind of gave up. There it is. And I started scrolling and I completely passed it. But yeah, this is it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to add it up here above everything else because you want you want your pixels to be the highest point in your hierarchy, right? So you're going to no, you're not going to drag that. You're going to drag this plateau into the middle. And there's a few ways you can do this. Uh if you're wanting to do an LCD you're going to leave these things straight up and down. You're not going to touch them. Uh, that will be a 90s style laptop. Uh, you, you're looking... Because all the ages of computers, they've all had different types of uh, setups. But like a 90s style laptop, uh, you know, like one of the first generations, their pixels actually went up and down. And you could see striations on them in this pattern, especially low quality LCDs had this a lot. Uh, if you want to do a kind of a modern sci-fi style, just uh, transform them to turn them sideways and then scale them into place. Uh, part two though, if you want to do a, like a standard, uh, like a TV screen, uh, TV screen pixels are actually offset. Uh, they're not straight lines. I do not know how to do it outside of Photoshop. And even in Photoshop, it's almost impossible to remember how to do it for me. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another set of lines in there, and you're going to see it get darker. And then I'm going to close this window out. If I can remember how to close the window out. I think it's this one. Yeah, okay. So close that window out. And then with this selected... Oh, I don't need this layer. I forgot. Uh, how do I delete you, mother bitch? Mother bitch. All right, so what you're going to do is you need to select this thing. going to right-click it, 
and you're going to not click that. You're going to click the box. Yeah, and hit apply mask to layer. And you're going to say, okay. And then while you're here, just go ahead and apply the mask to the second layer as well. And either one of these you want, just whichever one's selected, you're going to hit control T for your transformations. Uh, hold down shift and rotate. And it's going to snap and then just drag this out until you get to your edges so you, uh, everything's covered with the pixel. It's not going to give you perfect squares and that's perfectly fine. I mean you're already going for a distorted look anyways so I mean don't worry about it. If you absolutely have to have perfect squares figure out how to do perfect squares. It's on you man. But as you can see we've already got our pixels, our square pixels in place and I'm going to mergulate with the layer below and then I'm going to change this bad puppy to overlay I can't remember what I, I was it ad? no it wasn't ad maybe it was screen it was not screen <laughs> I can't remember I should have wrote these fucking things down I don't remember why I set the, oh there we go uh, a soft light's pretty good and then I'm going to drop it in intensity down to, I think I did 60, because 60 gave it a good, it has a good look to it at 60. It's not too dark, it's not too bright, but it gives you your pixels. And you're about halfway done at this point. Uh, there's still some more stuff you could do. Um, we're going to do our scan line. So... Especially with CRTs, I mean, you could do this still. Uh, flat screens update pretty much the whole screen at the same time. You could still see the progressive scan bar, but not always. But if you're looking at a CRT from back in the day and you're taking a still image of it, you are absolutely going to see the uh, progressive scan line. And scan lines are beautiful, um, especially in still frames. So... We're gonna use our selector. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna put it. Last time I had it above our eyes. I'm gonna put it right here in the middle, little, little low, a little lower, a little lower than middle. Maybe I'll put it. Um, I'm gonna put it over the bubba gum. And. Okay, we got our white set, and you're just going to fill this some bitch with some white. And then you want to... Can you delete? Yeah, okay. You want to deselect it. <clears throat> I'm going to take another drink. Hold on. It's refreshing, let me tell you. All right, we're going to go to blur again, and we're going to go to Gaussian blur. And... Is it... I, th I think I set this to 13 last time. You you don't want it to be too blurry. I can't even tell if that's blurry or not. There we go. Oh, yeah. No, I had it set to 35 last time. I remember now. 35 is good. See, it's going to give you a nice fuzz, but it's still kind of crisp, which is what, uh, what you're going to want. And you're going to want to change that to anywhere from add to screen level overlay. Okay, overlay, yeah, 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 yeah. Do it on overlay. So you can already see it, like it's it's there. But you're not going to be done with it. Because, I mean, you can leave it that way if you want. I don't like that. Uh, I like, you know, the whole point of this is to simulate motion. That's why you're doing all this stuff with the tracking effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the top fuzzed a little bit like such. So that way it's brighter down here than it is up here. And I'm actually going to actually kind of smudge that down a little more. There you go. So uh, there you have your progressive scan line. And if it does, you know, if you don't like it that strong, you can turn it down a bit. Uh... Usually, whenever you're dealing with light and you want light shadows, uh, you're going to go to 75%. 75% uh, is about good.
I like it. Actually, I'm going to switch this bad bitch up to 85. You know what I want to do? Just for shitsies and gigglies. I'm actually going to leave that uncut. And I'm going to drop it to 75 as is. And that looks pretty fucking fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm actually going to do a little bit of chopping here and there. Oh, that is gorgeous. Alright. So, your scan line. You can actually do multiple scan lines, too, if you want to simulate uh, a really fast refresh rate. I usually just keep one. Just It's easier that way. Uh, less stuff going on. And then, also, what else did we need to do? We needed to fuck with the image. Uh, I will state right now... I do not know how to do the chromatic aberration in Clip. Uh, Clip does not allow you to bust your layers apart. Now, if you do this in Photoshop, it's insanely easy to do. You just separate your uh, alpha channels and move them. Like, you physically move them. Uh, th Clip doesn't have alpha channels. It, it doesn't allow for it. Uh, a newer version might. I do have an older version, but as far as I know... Clip is not set up to use alpha channels for selections, so you can't separate your image out by color layers. In Photoshop, you literally just go to your channels, uh, you right-click, and you select split channels. It gives you, uh, if you're setting RGB, which you want to be for VHS effects because TVs are in RGB color, uh, you can just literally separate them apart and move them in any direction you want. <clears throat> can't do that in clip so you're never going to get it perfect for a glitch 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 in clip but it's okay if you absolutely have to have an image editor and clip isn't going to do what you want gimp is free and gimp has a lot of stuff that photoshop does i don't like gimp it's kind of bullshit but i mean it's free and poor people we have to do what we have to do right so no shame in using it all right what I'm now going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer with our cyberpunk badass lady on it. And we are going to do some image editing. Uh, now, your goal for VHS is to look shitty. Like, that's what you want. Uh, you're going to go to Tonal Corrections again. We're gonna, I, I didn't try this earlier, but I'm going to try posterize. Oh, Well, Joey, you might like this, because that straight up looks like an Amiga game. Like, that, that's pretty boss if you want to do some Amiga-style animation look. How, oh, 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 it's so dirty and sexy. But that's not what I want. It's not what I'm wanting to do. Uh, that's a... That's a really cool thing. Like, if you want to make some uh, video game screens, there you go. All right, so we're going to go back to Tonal Correction. We're going to go to Tone Curve again. Because I love my curves. And then we're going to keep it on RGB, and we're just going to start fucking with it. So we're going to wash it out a bit, because that's what you do. That's a little too washed out, I think. So what you're going to want is you're going to want to make your darks. There we go. Mm. That's looking pretty trashy. That might be a little too dark, I think. Can I... There you go. Alright, so we're starting to wash it out a bit, and that's good. That's what we're wanting to. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, you know what? I didn't think about this earlier. You know what? Okay, I, I didn't. I didn't think about this earlier. I'm going to try something. This might actually end up being a better part of uh, the thing. There's an old trick you can do. Uh, it's kind of like doing an unsharp mask. You can do this for uh, 
if you have an image that is blurry, you can actually do this trick and sometimes it'll give you a clearer, better image. I mean, it's never going to be perfect, but it, it, is, uh, it is a cool trick you can do. What we're going to do is we're going to go to a Gaussian blur and you want to do noticeable blur. You want it to be pretty blurry, but not so blurry that you can't tell what you're looking at. I don't know if you can see the scan line going across. <laughs> my computer is so slow. Uh, I need to get clip for my PC. I have a $2,000 PC that I had built, and it's a monster. Um, we're getting pretty close here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna blow my load here. I'm gonna go all the way up to 60. Somebody's texting me. Mm, I feel like this is be too much. No, perfect, fantastic. All right, so now you got your. Uh, you see how it's kind of funky, funky. So, oh, we gotta wait for Joey. Just uh, eleven minutes ago, liked a photo that I sent. Oh my god, this fucking computer. Okay. So, there's two ways. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do the grayscale. Um, okay, so you're going to change this bad boy. We're going to go to hue and saturation because this is the easiest way I know how to do this. Uh, you're going to turn your saturation all the way down. So you got a nice black and white image. Then, you're going to go back over to the layer and I believe it's overlay fan fucking tastic. Yep. That was fucking perfect. Alright, now you're gonna You're gonna zoom this down a bit. Alright, God, that was fucking perfect. I knew it. I knew that was gonna be a better idea. Um so number two it still seems a bit uh Seems a bit dark. <laughs> okay, so before I do uh, the other image corrector, I'm going to go right above or below the scan line. Actually, I'm going to go just above the image. I think that's the right place in the hierarchy for this. Uh, you're going to add some film grain. Film grain is insanely easy to do. Uh, it's literally, you go to your noise, you add your noise, and you want your noise to be fairly small. I think I'm gonna take it down to five. This or let's go to six eleven. Yep. Okay. Well, we're gonna take it to five. We're gonna go to five. Just to be appropriate. Yep. So you want your dots to be fairly small for film grain. Um, and then you're gonna go to your filters. You're gonna go to your blur. You're gonna go to your Gaussian. And you're going to let this probably stay at... S no, you're not going to stay. Ah, you could probably stay at 6. I'm going to go to 10. I'm going to go to 10. I'm feeling feeling froggy. Yep, 10's pretty good. Uh, I mean, you can even these numbers out if you want. I just, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. So, now you have that. Uh, immediately switch that to overlay. Boom, you got some film grain. Uh, and if you need to, you can drag that opacity down to about 75%. Okay, uh, at this point, you are very drastically noticing that it's getting darker and darker and darker. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take your original image that you've tweaked, tweaked, and tweaked. You're going to go to edit mode again. You're going to go to your tonal corrections. And... I'm just going to do some brightness and contrast on this one, I think, this time. Uh, I'm going to turn my contrast down, and it's going to kill some of that color. And I'm going to brighten it up, and it's going to kill some of that clarity. And then I'm also going to come up here... We're going to try something. I have it set to overlay. What does soft light do? Mmm. 
No, it's pretty close. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, it's getting so sexy. Yeah, uh, I'm going to actually blur. Why aren't you blurring? Oh, because you're, <laughs> you're you're not doing the right thing. That's why, you idiot. Okay, uh, we're going to click this uh, layer for our uh, film grain. And we're going to go back to blur it again. So, like, your film grain you want, uh, if you're looking to make it look like an 80s movie, for sure. Because they used really, really crappy stock in film. And it put just, like, ungodly amounts of film grain on everything. Uh, also, they used really cheap... Uh, that might be too much. Uh, they used really cheap chemicals whenever they would... Uh... Oh, that is entirely too not good. That is bad, actually. Uh, we're going to back that up. So what they would do is they would use uh, really shitty processes for uh, film production back in the day. And the biggest thing that they would do is they would use really, really cheap houses for uh, developing the film from movie reels. And movie film is actually, like, super, super sensitive. Like, it has to be done just right or, you know, it's going to screw everything up. And what they would do is these cheap places would leave their film... Uh, in the vats for just hours longer than it was supposed to. In some cases, movies had to be reshot in sections because they lost the negative. And so, the longer you leave it in there, the more grain is is taken out of the film, and that's what makes it look so like gritty and dark. Uh, whenever they made the Ben Affleck Daredevil, which is a horrible movie. But one of the processes that they did for uh, that movie was they made sure they, they filmed it on film instead of digital, and they intentionally left it in the vats long too long to give it that 1970s Frank Miller look. And it was a really good idea. So it was really good on them for actually trying. It's just they didn't bother. They tried really hard to make the film, but they did not try at all to uh, write the film, and it's just fucking garbage. Sorry about you, Ben. You were a fantastic Batman, though. That's for sure. Okay, so uh, we're pretty much at saturation point here. I don't think we can go much further. Um, we can we can gaussiate this a little more to give. Her oh, I know what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna gaussian her. To get her out of focus. And then I'm also going to go back into the unsharp mask. So that process that you do whenever you take your uh, image, blur it, turn it into grayscale, and then slap it on top. Uh, that's exactly what unsharp mask is. It's 100% what you're doing. Uh, I might have forgotten a step, actually. I think... I think I might have forgotten the step. I think I was supposed to invert. Can you even invert images in clip? Oh, oh, holy shit, that's perfect. Oh my god. That is exactly what it should look like. You know what? Oh, man. Man, I am excited. I'm going to turn my uh, grid back up here. A little bit. Oh my god. I can feel 1986 coming off of this image. That is fantastic. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's again, what I, I can't do a chromatic aberration inside of a clip. Clip doesn't allow for one. So, I can't do one unless I can figure out how to do one. And I doubt you want to spend any more time watching me fuck with this and listening to my idiotic voice. So, we're going to call it Dunsies, and uh, we're actually going to save this out again. 
Um, we're going to save this out again. Thank you. And we're going to call this uh, clip two. Oh, no, no, no. Toriel. <laughs> get it? Get it? It's, it's, it's two Toriel. See that? You see what it did there? That's what we called it. Yay. God damn, this computer's so slow. I 99% of the time am functioning entirely on an iPad Pro. Uh, I have a 12.9 uh, M1 iPad Pro, and it is my daily driver. I use it for everything. I barely, the only thing I ever use that PC that I built for, I built it to do 3D stuff, and I don't do 3D anymore. But, uh,. I 99% of the time work on that M1 Mini, and it is fantastic. Like, it does everything I need it to. Uh, it's easy as shit to draw on. And the Mini, uh, you know, she was built in 2014, and she's showing her age. She's slow. All right, uh, check this out. Actually, God. I, you know, I went to school to learn Photoshop <laughs> and all of its all of its stuff has uh, key commands and Clip does not have those key commands. You can actually drag this to any part that you want so if you wanted to put over her eyes and give it like that you know Kurosawa film look oh that's ooh hi sexy lady actually I like that more we're saving it Oh shit, sorry. I didn't realize that was going to take so fucking long to save. <laughs> uh, we're going to export... You... What the fuck? Okay, we're going to save it as a ping. Oh yeah, uh, Joey. If you're listening, buddy, friend, pal. It's pronounced ping. Ping file. Not PNG. Ping. Like a tiff. Or a gif. It's ping. Remember that. Love you, buddy. You're the best. Champion. Little buddy. Uh, I hope this taught you exactly what you're wanting to be taught it. And anybody else watching, I'm sorry I am the way I am. Oh, you gotta click. You, you gotta click it. You gotta click the thing. Bro, just save the goddamn image. You know what? I bet this bad bitch crashed. She does that sometimes. She crashes. She is almost 10 years old. Oh, hey! Alright. Fuck off out of here.